Hello friends, neighbors, John your whiskey neighbor here and welcome out to the deck. Beautiful fall Sunday afternoon, wind blowing through the trees as they're changing color. Wow, this is nice to take a moment together. And since it's Sunday, I need to shoot some samples. Apologize that I haven't been doing that as faithfully as I should. I have two bourbon samples today. One is from Andy and coincidentally it's called Whistling Andy Harvest, Whistling Andy Harvest Select. It's a 40% bourbon, I believe it's out of Montana. And then I've got another sample here. Oh, it's got a number. Uh, oh right, this is uh, Balcones uh, Single Pot Still. Single Pot Still? Maybe not called single, but it's Balcones Pot Still. And this is from Ray out of Texas. So whiskey's from Texas and, uh, and Ray, thanks for that sample. So if you stay with me, I'll give you just my thoughts and impressions from these two bourbons. One's at 40%, one's at 46, but uh, both four grain bourbons. Interesting. Three, four. Thanks for staying with me. I don't actually know the mash bill of either of these exactly, but I know that each of them contain uh, corn, wheat, rye, and barley. So it's a four grain, all of them. Uh, and this Whistling Andy Harvest Select is uh, bottled at 40%. As I said, it's out of Montana. It's in my market and it's really rather affordable. So I'm curious to see how this is. Well, here in the fresh air, I'm getting um, some nice corn sweetness. A little bit of spice. A little bit of something not as great, a little bit metallic, a little bit uh, mineral. Yeah, so it's a mix of, you know, some of that, some of that sweet spice that I can get in a classic bourbon profile. Uh, but then there's a little something going on. I don't know yet whether it's going to go into the palate, but a little bit of a, a mineral. Yeah, interesting quality. A little bit of husky spice there, um, like a burnt cinnamon. Interesting. Let's try it on the palate. Cheers. Some vanillas, some caramels, things we're looking for in bourbons. So I'm getting that from that new oak. It's got to be young. A little bit harsh though. Edges are, um, yeah, a little bit bitter, a little bit tannic. They're not bad though. For 40%, it has a lot of presence, a lot of push. Um, so it's got a bit of hug, it's got a bit of bit of burn going down. Not the first whiskey of the day, so take it for what it's worth. Well, you know what? On the on the little bit of the finish now, let it kind of play back. It's got back into some of that sweet toffees. A little bit of Werther candy. One more sip. So, um, I catch pieces of things that I really like. A little bit of burnt sugars, a little bit of light toffees, um, oak presence. But it's it's from from that mineral industrial nose through to a little bit of hog and bitter. It needs time, perhaps. It needs something to um, to to try to iron out some of the challenges with this bottle. It's not bad, but you know, I, that's about half the sample Andy gave me. So, you know, I'll go back to it, give it another fair shot and consider buying a bottle. As I said, it's very affordable in my market, but up front, it's not my runaway favorite today. Looking at the other sample, this one here is Balcona's uh, Pot Still. Again, uh, I know it's got corn, wheat, rye, barley, probably different ratios. And both of them actually advertise being field, like farm to glass or field to, I can't remember how they say that, but... Uh, but I haven't had a lot of Balcones, only just samples. I have yet to bring a bottle home. Let's try this one now. It's 46%. Let's try it on the nose. Boy, almost a roasted corn. Or, or just more oak. Maybe that's it in my mind. Because when I hear the word Balcones, I think of blue corn. I think of, you know, the amazing things they're doing with corn. Yeah, so to be fair, 
that's probably suggestive, but a definite more char oak presence on the nose. If I compare this, now this has moved into uh, like some of that minerals gone and it's just kind of light sweet toffee. And this is darker, um, definitely, I know I said some of that over here, but in comparison, this is now like that, that roast that I've used this analogy a lot, but it's because it's part of my favorite thing, which is that edge of a cinnamon bun tray. You've brought it out. It's a little bit burnt and you kind of chew off that, you know, it's got that cinnamon and, and, uh, melted brown sugar, maybe a bit of butter. It's got that kind of burnt cooked, um, note to it. Yeah. It's evolving very nicely. In comparison, this stays kind of light. Got a bit of apple in that. Okay, this is coming together. Yeah, glad I stayed with it. You know, it often, especially out here, there's a fair amount of breeze moving through. I need to really stay at the nose to get at more layers, kind of get past first impressions. And this has moved into a nice uh, oak present, cooked down brown sugar cinnamon note on the palate. Cheers. It's much richer. Um, those notes in the nose play into the palate. Now there's something on the edge I'm gonna to try to pick out for you, but right now I'm still just getting exactly what the nose was telling me. Lots of caramel, a bit of spicing on the edges that I'm gonna go with some oak spicing. I know it's young, probably only about two years. Better try another sip. Cheers again. The palate is now giving me a bit more cracked pepper, a bit more spice. I like that. There's a sweetness that keeps popping up and going away. I can't grab it. That's what I was going to try to tell you. Like, I don't know if it's at like a, what would be a sweeter nut? Almond? Um, something, something that's a little bit nutty, but pretty sweet. Some kind of candied cooked nut is playing around in there. Every now and then, I also get a little bit of um, a little bit of a bitterness playing around. And I've been getting that a lot in bourbons lately. It's so weird how um, I tend to pick up bourbons quickly and go, oh man, love the flavors here, and then I have to really spend time to get into scotches. And right now, my palate is exactly the opposite. I'm picking up scotches and single malts and really enjoying them. Bourbons, I'm picking them up. I'm liking the, the spicing, the, the cinnamons, the, the cooked, the cooked stuff that I'm telling you, but then I get this like, it's from the oak, I think. It's suddenly a little bit oak tannic or oak forward and I'm really tasting it. And normally I love that. I actually love heavily oaked uh, bourbons, but I'm playing with it now. Now, the more I talk, the more this is coating, nice feel in the mouth, um, and really just a great experience. Certainly of the two, I prefer the Balcones pot still, like a significant amount more but wasn't put off entirely with this. It's just a little, yeah, now it's come back. It's just a little young or something about it that uh, needs a bit more time. Hey, thank you both to Andy and uh, Ray for sending these samples. It's the only way I can do these sample Sundays. And, and as always, my thoughts, and as always, first thoughts, like very first thoughts. And I suggest, uh, you know, people talk about neck pores or about it. You know, whether the whiskey is changing or our appreciation is changing, I can't say. But I encourage you that certainly if you're evaluating or trying to get a no whiskey, give it time in the glass, uh, give it time on your shelf, uh, give yourself time to really give it a chance to, to, to shout its virtues. But up front, I would definitely bring a bottle home of this pot still. I'm on the fence of this Whistling Annie, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give, it a, give it another shot. There's more in that sample bottle. Thanks for joining me out here. Hope you guys had a good weekend and the work week starts out to be better than many. Take care.